What's going on guys, Winter Kills here, and welcome to a brand new deck profile. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys my updated Marin Cess deck for September of 2021. And uh, this is basically going to act as like a starting point uh, before one deck one month. And I'll also be uploading a deck profile after the fact, just as like uh, before and after, uh, if you want to put it that way. But um, I also recently put up a test hand video for this deck, so if you guys want to check it out, to see how this version of the deck plays. I'll leave a link to it up in the top right. Um, yeah, so if you're new to Marin Sess, definitely check that video out. And uh, maybe if you're not new, who knows, you might learn something. But today we are going to be going through the full main, extra, and side deck for you guys. Um, this is where my list is at right now after playing it for a couple of weeks um, and trying to uh, get it to the best spot I can possibly be. Uh, I've grinded for probably... 20 plus hours on dueling book with this deck and attended maybe like three or four locals with it already uh, and it's been a lot of fun and i think it has a lot of potential as a rogue deck in this current format um so yeah like always before we get into the video i want to mention a quick shout out to imperium duelist if you guys are interested in amazing play mats deck boxes sleeves dice backpacks binders uh they sell all those kinds of things at their site down in the description below and you can get all their stuff for 10 percent off using my discount code winner kill sent off including uh, sleeves like these. Uh, these are currently out of stock, but if you go to their site right now, I believe you can sign up for their newsletter or email, uh, and you will be notified first when the sleeves come back in stock. So definitely go do that if you haven't already. Uh, and of course, you can get it for 10% off with my discount code. And if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player, please do not forget to use my affiliate link down in the description of all my videos. You guys shop and check out using that link. A small bit of the revenue from your purchase goes right back in the channel and it helps out a ton. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the quick deck profile. Alright, so now for this part of the video, we're going to go through the deck profile one more time, but a little bit slower and a lot more in detail. So the first card we're going to take a look at is 3 Blue Tang. Uh, this is one of your main normal summons of the deck when it is normal or special summoned. Uh, you can send a Meritess monster from your deck to the grave, which is really nice. That gets you access to another extender like Seahorse uh, or Mandarin, depends on which one you opened. Um, you usually send the one that you didn't open, or if you didn't open any other Marincess monsters, you always just send Seahorse, because you're going to get it back off of your slug to continue playing with. And um, it also has another fact, too, when it is Link Summoned, uh, you can reveal the top three cards of your deck and then take any Marincess card you find there. Um, you know, expecting to get a card off of that is pretty much just wishful thinking. I wouldn't really ever expect uh, that effect to uh, get you anything, but when it does, it is really great. Uh, most of the times it's probably just going to be like another monster or a blue tang um, You really want to reveal something like wave or battle ocean off of it Because uh, I think those are like the most impactful cards you could get um, It really depends on what the rest of your hand looks like and um, when it's linked off uh, With a uh, blue slug you can chain block your blue slug by activating this as chain link 2 um, And that you know protects your blue slug from bell to make sure you get back whatever extender you sent um, So yeah three blue tang you got to play three and then we have three seahorse Hopefully this will be Starlight by the time one deck one month wraps up or sometime in between. Um, but uh, this card is another really good starter for the deck. Um, the thing that's different about Seahorse and Tang is Seahorse can be an extender and a starter, whereas Tang really is only a starter at heart. Um, yes, you could argue the fact that it reveals to get you another card could be considered like an additional extender, um, but I really wouldn't go so far as to call it that. I would just say it's a starter. Uh, but this card can be both a starter and an extender, which is really awesome. Um, it doesn't do anything on the field or in the grave, at least the turn that it's sent there. Um, so this card is also kind of resilient to hand traps too, which is nice. Um, but basically, um, this card is also like a single-handedly just a one card link four uh, i showcase how to do that combo in the uh, test hand video so more reason to go watch that if you haven't seen it 
Um, but uh, its effect is basically we can summon this card uh, from our hand to his own a Marin Cess Link Monster points to. Um, and then we can only special summon it once per turn that way. But if it's in the graveyard, except the turn that was sent there, we can banish this card from the grave as cost. Special summon one water monster from our hand to his own a Marin Cess Link Monster points to. Um, so yeah, uh, just a really great extender and can also start our combos uh, if we need it to. So three is definitely fine. And again, you can just dump it off of the Tang as well. Uh, and then one Mandarin. This card, I think, is like, I'm like 95% sure that this is like, like has to be played, or at least should be played, uh, because one problem I was finding with this deck in the uh, past few weeks that I've been playing it, um, obviously you should be going for your unaffected combo every time, because if you can go for it, it gives you the best chance at winning, I find. Um, and it also, it kind of depends on the matchup too, but you ideally always want to go for it. And before I was noticing, if I open up Tang and Seahorse together, um, or just Tang, um, like, it didn't really get me to full combo, and it was confusing. I'm like, I'm opening up, like, two of the best starters in the entire deck, starter slash extenders. Why can't I pull this off? And it was because I still needed another water extender on top of that, and Mandarin bridges that gap. So now if I open Tang with Seahorse, I dump the Mandarin, and it gets me where I need to be. Um, or if I open up Mandarin and, uh, Tang, I can just dump Seahorse, and again, it gets me to the same place. And, um, opening up Tang and Seahorse plus a water extender is full combo. Um, same thing can actually be said with the Mandarin. Um, the only thing that changes with it is you have to link this into Sea Angel first, uh, get your field spell, then summon your water extender, make uh, Anemone, Anemone brings back the Sea Angel, and then this gets summoned, uh, and then you can go into your Crystal Heart. So I really like this card uh, as a one of. It's also full combo off of one for one, too. And if you still have full combo without the one for one, you can just use it as a hand trap bait and then talents them to rip a card. Um, or draw into more uh, and then a card that i'm not sure how many people play um in this deck i know in like past profiles people were playing it i'm not sure if i ever always play this card but this card is basically a better marin cess monster than mandarin on paper and also pascalus and it's not even a marin cess monster uh this card says during your main phase you can reveal a link monster in your extra deck and if you do when you link some this turn you can treat this card uh, as link material the same name type and attribute as the reveal monster and then when it hits the grave for a link summon um you can add a level five or higher cyber so you're gonna always search script in uh you could search crown tail if that card actually did anything worthwhile um you know for your strategy um you were, or you can search like a side deck card like anti-human intelligence messiah which is also really really bonkers um, so this card gets you into your link one and gets you an extender to either get to a link four like this card is a one card link four just like uh, seahorses but if you have the uh, water extender paired with this it's also you know full unaffected combo and it's a one for one target too which late game can be very nice for getting a body adding back off of your slug and then getting the script on to extend with um, so i really like to uh, skipper so technically in the deck we only have five normal summons um because this card is unique in the fact that it doesn't have it can be a normal summon or extender um this card is like borderline uh only a normal summon but um even if you have this is just your normal summon if you just have a water extender um you're still in there so i think those are uh like the 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 main marin cess monsters that are played that's three six eight nine nine marin cess monsters if you want to count skipper as a marin cess and the first water extender that i'm playing is silent angler i think this is hands down the best water extender in like our arsenal um i would play this card like 10 times out of 10 over pascalus uh, just because it's ease of access, right? The activation requirement for this card is so very, very low, and that's why I love it. Um, it does have a restriction on it, though. It says if we control a water monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, uh, but you cannot special summon monsters from your hand for the rest of the turn. Um, so that almost, like, never conflicts. Uh, you just always want to summon this last, and you also might be wondering why not play the uh, Tenny Spirit Shathana. Well, playing the Tenny Spirit over this uh, forces you to actually walk right into Nibiru, Whereas this, you still can get Nibiru, but you still have a much better chance at recovering because you can keep your Crystal Heart in the EMZ. Uh, but if you start with the Tenny, um, I think you are you have like Sea Angel, uh, Slug, and your Tenny on board, and then they can Nibby right there, which is way more high impact. Uh, Silent Angler uh, gives you the option to choose when you want to summon instead of being forced to summon at the start of your turn. And also drawing this late game, uh, it's much better than drawing the Tenny. Um, so that's why I think Silent Angler is just correct, and the Tenny is not. Unless you're playing like a super uh, level 4, rank 4 spam build, um, which I think is like unnecessary, um, then you can play the Tenny. Um, 
But next we play Scripton, which is the last water monster we're playing. This is searchable off of your four mud skipper, um, and uh, it summons itself by banishing a Cybers monster from the grave. And then if it's sent to the grave as link material for a Cybers monster, which uh, lo and behold, all of the monsters we play in our extra deck, I think except for one, um, are Cybers. Um, we can target a banished monster, shuffle into the deck. So this card really comes up uh, sometimes when you're banishing your links. Um, yes, you can put four mud skipper back, but like you really don't want to do that because you'd rather uh, leave the deck. Um, you know, in a position where you're more likely to draw into hand traps off of your uh, bubble reef instead of drawing into like a scripton you just or uh, a four month skipper you just recycled. Um, so I really like this card, but again, it comes up with clutch because you can banish like a sea angel or a slug and then link it off and put that back in the extra deck. And that's extremely important because one of the hardest parts about this deck is resource management, especially when it comes to your extra deck. Uh, it's very easy to just blow through everything uh, turn after turn and then you don't have a grind game. So this card uh, just as a one of in the extra deck helps that greatly. Uh, and then I'm sure as you guys saw, uh, the rest of the extra or the main deck uh, for monsters anyways uh, is hand traps because that's basically going to be the gimmick of this deck. Uh, it's protect the castle with the bubble reef uh, and then hopefully you're drawing into hand traps off of it as well. Um, it's we're basically a one slash one and a half to two card combo deck. Um, so we have a lot of room uh, for opening up a bunch of hand traps and the engine itself is pretty small uh, as you guys saw. So we have a ton of room for hand traps, which is great. So three ash, just most generic uh, hand trap this format. Uh, three Valor, um, again, kind of generic as well. Uh, your opponent's going to always be activating monster effects, and it's also really good against select matchups uh, like Tri Brigade and Drytron. Uh, halfway decent against Prank Kids, um, and also just really good at inherently stopping cards like Anaconda. Um, so, three Effect Valor. Uh, then I play three Skullmeister. This is like a second Ash um, against Tri Brigade. Um, a, a second ash against prank kids uh, it's basically like a second ash and bell against drytron so just really good against a lot of the meta matchups um, even some rogue decks as well and then two ghost bell same thing can be said here dd crow actually hurts this deck quite a bit um, so having a card in the main deck to out dd crow or call by the grave is really great um, and uh, it's not a hard it, this, this is a hard once per turn uh, unlike meister and valor so that's why i'm playing three meister three valor and i'm not playing three bell um, but I'm playing three Ash, even though it's our once per turn, because uh, Ash is just, I think, the best hand trap this format. Uh, then we have two Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Uh, gets us a body and board that can protect our normal summons, helps cycle our hand, and a lot of decks do link summon nowadays. Uh, and if we draw it off of our Bubble Reef, you know, we can just use it to draw even more cards. Um, so that's it for the monster lineup. I think it's like 24 monsters or something. Now we'll go into the spells where we have three sign up mining. Uh, not much to say here other than basically just Rota for our deck. It sucks that we have to discard for it. That's the biggest detractor about this card. Um, you have to be very careful with this card. Um, like, think of it this way. Like, always think of it that this card is never going to resolve. Just always think of that that way. You, you'll play much safer and you'll lose less games because of that. Um, yeah, just always expect your sign it to get Ash. And if it doesn't, you're probably going to have a really good turn. Um, then we have two Ready Fusion. Uh, this is basically just a water extender similar to Silent Angler and Scripton. Um, that's why we play the Rare Fish, because uh, we can summon out from the extra deck and link with it because it's a water. I only wish we could summon a Cybers off of this. If we could summon a Cybers off of this, I'd probably play three. But we don't have a Ready Fusion Cybers monster yet. Hopefully we will someday. Um, and I'm not playing uh, Sea Monster of Theseus because I think Rare Fish just fits better because of its attack stat. Uh, two Triple Tactics Talents, and I want to mention Instant Fusion here at the same time. You're probably wondering why aren't you playing uh, three uh, talents? Um, I'm probably only going to play the two one until Instant Fusion gets banned, which probably might happen in this next list uh, now that Ready Fusion is in the game. Um, but I like Instant Fusion and talents uh, because if I draw both these together, I can get use out of them instead of drawing just two talents together, which is like the worst case scenario. And Instant Fusion, since I'm playing Millennium Eyes, um, is much more uh, proactive than it is reactive like talents. I have to wait to get hand traps before I use talents. Uh, which sometimes might be too late um, but having an instant fusion uh, ready for millennium eyes is just really good to start off your combo and instant fusion is flexible because it can summon your rare fish too if you really really need that water extender um, for whatever it may be uh, one one for one as i explained in the test hand video and earlier this is full combo with mandarin uh, the discard does suck so be careful with it uh, call by the grave this card is insane and probably should be banned too uh, and then we have one uh, battle ocean um, this is kind of like the centerpiece of your deck. 
Uh, some Meritus players will disagree on that. Uh, I personally think uh, the deck is uh, very reliant on this card. I really do want to try and play two. Um, I just have to find another French copy first. By the way, if you have foreign uh, Meritus cards, hit me up. I'm definitely interested. I love foreign cards, and I would love to get this deck in form before we start one deck a month or uh, over the course of it. Um, but it basically says all monsters, all Meritus monster control gain 200 attack. Uh, and then they also gain 600 attack for each merit test link monster equipped to them. And then uh, any monster that was link summoned in the extra monster zone using merit test crystal heart is unaffected by your opponent's card effects. And anytime you link summon for a merit test monster in the EMZ, you can equip up to three merit test link monsters from your grave to it. And then again, it gains 600 attack for each. Um, so that's how you can chain link block your anemone by going chain link one anemone, chain link two field spell. You can also just chain block with this card a lot because it is not a once per turn. Uh, at least in terms of the equip effect. Uh, then we have three Marincess Wave for the only trap in the deck. Uh, you're probably wondering, uh, you know, with the extensive hand trap lineup, why aren't you playing Imperm? Right, Imperm is a really good card. We know that doesn't trigger talents. Well, this is basically an in arc type Imperm, and I can either draw it off of Phantasme or Bubble Reef, and it's still going to be live. And this card also comes with the added benefit if we have a link to our higher Marincess. Uh, not only is it Imperm, basically, um, but uh, all monsters we currently control are unaffected by our opponent's card effects. And if we have a Link 3 or higher Marincess, we can activate it from our hand, and it's not a hard one to return. This card is actually bonkers. I only wish it were searchable. I mean, it's technically searchable by a blue tank, because, you know, you can reveal the top three. But, like, odds are you're not going to reveal this. I think if you don't open one, and you're revealing off Tang immediately, I think you have, like, a 23 or 25% chance to get one. It's not astronomically low, but it's pretty unlikely. Um, so yeah, three wave. I wasn't playing this before because I was playing a striker engine, but I think this just makes way more sense uh, in the deck, uh, just because it's a lot higher impact. And if you draw it off bubble reef, it's not dead. Uh, now we'll go to the extra deck. Uh, we have our link one sea angel. Uh, this searches your field spell, which is great. Uh, the arrow scheme on this card is really great because you'll notice that a lot of our uh, merit system link monsters just tend to point down. Uh, so having that side arrow is great for cards like seahorse and also mandarin. Uh, so just one of those. Uh, then I play two blue slug uh, on summon, uh, adds back a Meritus monster in the grave. Uh, it is susceptible to bell, which is unfortunate, but uh, you can chain block oftentimes with the blue tang. Um, you can only link summon uh, each of these guys once per turn, by the way. Um, but if it gets striked, you know, you can just go again. Um, and then after you add, use the add back effect, you're locked into water. So that's turn, which doesn't always end up being a big deal. Um, it's kind of like, think of it like if you guys know me for playing Earth Machine. Um, you know, usually resolve Dozer turn one, it locks you into Earth Machines, um, and you never try to resolve a turn three, so you can access more of your extra deck. In this case, it's transcode and access code for us. Turn three, if you don't have to use this effect, you really don't want to use it. Um, and it allows you to grind too. Um, you could play three, but I just don't think it's necessary, especially for the extra deck space. Um, then I'm playing one area of the Water Charmer. This is like the only flex spot in the entire deck. Uh, you could play Link Karibo, you could play a third Blue Slug, you could play a second Sea Angel. Um, you could play Update Jammer too. Um, I like this card because if I open up like a Hand Trap and a Ready Fusion, um, I can go into this and then if it dies, I can search uh, Blue Tang basically. Um, this card also helps to play around um, things like uh, Contact C, uh, which is really good. So that's why I play it mainly because I'm afraid of Contact C. Uh, people are already siding for like Tri Brigade and Prank Kids in some instances, so I don't want to get sided against me just because it kind of overlaps with the uh, current counters of the meta splash mage this card is mandatory because if you don't open up a water extender uh, without playing this you can't go into your link four off of just one marincess so that's why i play splash it can also help you link climb into transcode access code uh one crystal heart uh this is kind of an engine requirement if you ever want to make any link monster you put in the emz unaffected by card effects you have to play this um it's also unaffected by your opponent's monster effects in the emz on its own um so you can play around dib that way and you can like equip it with a field spell and boost it up by like uh, 2k um, if you put all three links on it and the additional 200 from the field spell. And if you have a Marincess card in hand, you can like discard it to like make it so it can't be destroyed by battle and you take no battle uh, damage. So you can play around Nid if you really know they have it um, and just kind of sit on that for a turn uh, and hopefully it buys you some time. Two Anemone. Uh, Mermel decks play this card. I play it in Mermel. I know some other decks might play it as well. Uh, targets any water with 1500 uh, or less attack in your graveyard, summons it back to his own points to, and then you get locked into waters for the rest of the turn. Um, it's kind of like how uh, Splash Mage locks you into Cybers for the rest of the turn. 
Uh, but then when this card hits the grave, uh, if it's sent from the field of the grave, you can target a Meritus card in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. So it gets you back wave, gets you back your field spell. Um, and playing multiples, I think, is necessary for the grind. Um, and again, like I was saying, uh, resource management is so important because, like, sometimes you can use this card to put back a slug, and then sometimes you can use a slug to put back a anemone. And you always kind of want to have one in the extra deck, so you have to be very, very careful with how you go through those resources because, believe me, you can go through them very easily. Uh, one Transco Talker. This deck has a hard time OTKing without cards like Transcode and Access Code. I know Access Code is expensive, um, but I would recommend at least play Transcode and Update Jammer uh, because you can make it work on your turn three, 100%. Um, so we play those. Uh, then one Marbled Rock. This card um, is not that great to end on. It used to be the card we'd end on, um, but now you'd rather just be ending on Bubble Reef because Bubble Reef gets you way more advantage. And again, this card helps recycle your resources. Um, so you can get back wave, you can get back your field spell, any Marincess card, uh, that's just as on field effect, target a Marincess card except itself, add it back to your hand. Um, and you can summon this off of your Wonder Heart too, like turn after turn, just to keep literally slowly recycling everything, helps in the grind game, a necessary one of in my opinion. Axis Code Talker, again, this deck has a hard time killing people, Axis Code Talker certainly will help fix that, and this card also has some synergy with Bubble Reef, which you're always going to be ending on, and if you climb into Axis Code while this card is up, when you banish a pop, this card will gain 600 as a result, uh, making, it, making it easier to OTK. Uh, the only downside about this card is we only ever have like two attributes to banish. If you play Link Rebo, you could possibly get a third, um, and then I play one Wonder Heart. Um, this card I very rarely go into, and I've actually been contemplating on not playing it, but uh, beautiful French copy is a beautiful French copy. You know, obviously, uh, this card is really good in the fact that uh, basically it says during the damage calculation, um, you can special summon, basically take one of your uh, Meritus links that's equipped to it, and special summon it. And then uh, during that battle, you take no da uh, battle damage, and then this card cannot be destroyed by that battle. So, like, you can equip it with, like... Uh, Marbled Rock, Anemone, and Bubble Reef, for example. And maybe it's unaffected by card effects because you had the field spell. Um, but you can attack into something that's bigger than this, maybe. Use the effect and bring up a Marbled Rock, and then gr grab back like this uh, to like have a negate for next turn. Or you can bring back your Bubble Reef and pitch a card to bring back something else, right? This card is great just for like getting access to links that are in your grave that you might need to resolve, but you don't have the resources to like make something put that to the grave, and then put that back in the extra deck, and then make it again, right? Um, this card kind of saves you resources, I guess, and uh, also helps you put on extra damage, too. Uh, then one Bubble Reef, this is like your towers, you kind of just make this to protect. Uh, once per turn, during each standby phase, you can banish a water from your graveyard, or face a field to draw a card, and then each time a monster or monsters is banished face up, this card gains 600 attack for each. So, let's say, at least as far as I understand it, I could be wrong, but if you're playing against Tri Brigade, and they, you know, normal summon kit, banish for to summon Ominous Omen. This card will gain 2400 attack because they did banish monsters face up and they banished four, four times 600 is 2400. So that'll boost this card up greatly. Um, so yeah, definitely a huge boss monster while it's on the field. Um, it can draw you cards during your opponent's turn. And then on your turn, you can discard a water uh, to special summon one of your banished Marincess monsters, which helps you link climb and OTK. Uh, and then I play two ready fusion slash instant fusion targets. Um, obviously this is just for instant fusion, but this helps you play through hand traps, and again, uh, the, uh, the instant fusion and talents, like, instant fusion's more, uh, proactive, whereas talents is reactive, and this card is too good, uh, to give up right now. Um, and then one rare fish, uh, is the main ready fusion target. I'm not playing Thessius because this has the 1500 attack stat, so we can revive it off of an enemy, uh, because the ready fusion says that summon is treated as a fusion summon. Uh, so yeah. That is it for the extra deck. I'll run through the side deck very, very quickly. Um, we have uh, three Droll and Lock. Obviously, the side is dependent on your uh, local meta. Uh, I was thinking about maining this maybe in you know the next format. We'll see how it shifts. Um, but right now, I think it's better in the side. One Anti-Human Intelligence Messiah. Uh, searchable off of your uh, four Mud Skipper. Great Cybers card says any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead except monster card so this card has a lot of implications against like certain rogue decks like true draco um also very good against sky striker and could even be pretty good against vw because uh, they're king long Jean Wu's, and Chu chase are getting banished as you clear them ideally um but uh, you definitely don't have to play this card it's kind of like an experimental flex spot it's flex spot if you will uh then i play two in uh super poly targets uh, Mud Dragon and Starving Venom is, I think, they're just the most accessible. 
uh, three cosmic four back row removal uh, and like the best form banishing uh, then three super poly a uh, great board breaking card going second pretty much unstoppable card is literally just insane um so yeah i definitely got to play it uh, i was also thinking about playing dimension shifter which i got the idea to play d shifter from a profile that was uploaded on papa goat ygo's channel uh he did a profile for a guy named alvin that went 6-0 uh at a 3v3 tournament i believe and he played against a lot of really good meta strategies and at the end of the profile he talked about like uh he had a potential like shifter combo worked out which uh, he didn't showcase in the video, so I kind of interpreted what it might look like in that test hand video if you guys want to go check it out. Um, but if you want to check out his profile, again, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Um, but right now, I, I don't have it fully fleshed out, so I'm just opting to play Super Poly in the side deck for now. Uh, and then the last card I'm playing is 3 Rivalry of the Warlords. Um, great going first card, uh, and a lot of decks aren't going to be able to play through this. Tri Brigade, Prank Kids... Um, and even uh, VW, I couldn't think of VW, but this is really good against VW. If they normal summon GG or any worm monster, like, good luck outing this. But apparently, if you have rivalry up, they can still attempt to Lulu. Lulu will still send, uh, but they don't get to summon. I, at least I think that's how that ruling works, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, they're still not going to be doing much under rivalry because they have no worm monsters in the extra deck. Except for, I think, the rank 6, but ideally you save a effect failure for that. Um, this only conflicts with your Ready Fusion and your Silent Angler, unfortunately. That's why I was thinking about playing Gozen Match, but I think this card is just a little bit more higher impact uh, than Gozen Match is right now. But uh, that is it for the deck profile. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. And like always, a special thanks goes to our Divine Level channel members and their Cadillacs84, Pony Stark, Keith Sidgers, and Daryl Best. Thank you guys so much for your extremely generous support of this channel.